as they rode along and they sang their song. She's been a band and Adam Bong, her golden glove, it stood for right. She'd rip your arms off in the night if she tried, and she would, and she could, and she should watch it. I'm gonna jump through your television sets and suck your bloody blood out. <laughs> Unfortunately, someone we love very dearly is unable to be with us tonight. So we are going to discuss the supernatural, the weird, the year. People who aren't nice. Horror is a strange thing. Some people believe that if I stand inside a six-pointed star, I can protect myself from demons. Ludicrous. People who believe in vampires suggest driving a stake through their hearts. Oh! Auntie Jack! Auntie Jack, I thought you were dead. No, I've got better, Neville. Oh, well, Auntie Jack, I'm here. No, thank you. Another thing believed to frighten vampires is garlic. I know, come over here. What are you doing, Auntie Jack? <laughs> You've been eating garlic. Yes, Auntie Jack. It's believed to frighten off vampires. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> well, have you ever heard of an Italian vampire? <laughs> oh, no, I never have. <laughs> Your lies help your heart A victim of vengeance A born little man Of a terrible plan Of the oil candle Ah, who saved the day Still, <laughs> flat on her back, couldn't look left or right. <laughs> and all through the night, she scanned the skies. <laughs> <laughs> Who, like a rocketing rodent from out of the skies, is it a bird? It's not a bird. Is it a plane? It's a note of a plane. No, it's Incredible Eric and his brother Luigi. Here I come to save the day. It's Incredible Eric and his brother Luigi. I'm Incredible.
knew Your eyes were searching the skies for me, my love I knew your eyes went searching the skies for them, my love For I only have eyes for you What cell are you in? Ah, uh, seven six eight. Oh, really? You're in with me. Really? Yeah. Hey, what are you in for? Murder, rape, breaking and entering, and uh, dangerous driving. <laughs> That's amazing. That's exactly what I'm in for. Huh? Hey, how'd you get caught? Ah, oh, it's a long story. I broke into this house, yeah. and it was the wrong house. And I woke this woman. She uh, caught me loading the silver. Started screaming for the police. I didn't like that much, so I had to hit her. I clobbered her good, but a bit too hard. Killed her by mistake. Then I got booked for dangerous driving on leaving the scene of the crime. She's that strange, you know. Why? Oh, well, I was breaking into this house, yeah. and this woman caught me late in the uh, picture frames, yeah. and she started to scream for the police, and I asked her to stop, and she wouldn't say I walloped her, and I accidentally killed her. And I got booked for dangerous driving on leaving the scene of the crime, and it was the bloody wrong house anyway. Funny. Yeah. How long did you get? Ah, uh, 20 years. Really? Yeah. I got 20 years. Isn't, Isn't that, that strange? strange? Are you married? No. Wife died. Oh, yeah. So is mine. <laughs> um, what happened to yours? Oh, she was just lying in bed and some mongrel broke in and hit her on the head. <laughs> <laughs> What about yours? Oh, she, she was in bed and a bloke went wallop and you know, she was gone. Shocking how things like that can happen, innit? <laughs> hey, um, you don't live at Mossman, do you? No? Nah? Yeah. Ah. Uh. Pardon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a small, small world. world. He who enters this tomb shall wither and die. There is still too much superstition surrounding so-called Pharaoh's curses. We know today, of course, that there is absolutely no substance in these curses whatsoever. It's time we heard more stories like the one about Howard Carter, the eminent Egyptologist who died, so they say, as a result of a curse from the Pharaoh Tutankhamen. He did die, certainly, but he died 15 years later, and he was run over by a bus in London. A touch of irony in this case is that the bus driver's name was Abdul Fez Ramesses, <laughs> a bus known of Arab football supporters past Cleopatra's needle at the time the fatal incident occurred. But this is just the cruel humor of irony rather than proof of a pharaoh's curse. One of the most consistent things about these curses is that they are unspecific. They never tell you exactly what will happen to you. Like this one, they simply say, the trespasser shall beware, for even yet the curse of Osiris and Dra be yet upon him. Ah, oh, this one, that cursed be the name, and he even hit the progeny unto the seventh son. For yet, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Lloyd, 
wake up, Mr. Malloy. That's right. Tom. There we go. <laughs> oh, you fainted dead away there, Mr. Malloy. I was trying to explain our new method of painless extraction. What we uh, do, we don't actually pull the teeth out anymore. Mm. We just crush them where they are and let the pieces fall out in their own good time. <laughs> oh, Mr. Malloy, come on, come on. Stop kidding around. Come on. That's better. Right, now let me show you. Now, here are some teeth. Now, what we do is we just crush the tooth uh, where it is, like that. Uh, and uh, let the pieces fall out in their own good time. Now, uh, we'll just give you a small injection. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, there's enough there. Yeah, well, it won't hurt there either, will it? Now, well, we'll just wait for that to take effect. And meanwhile, have a bit of a drink. Oh, no, 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 Oh, we've drilled straight through your tongue, Mr. Malloy. Oh. Naughty Mr. Malloy, we must keep our tongue out of the way of the drill. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Look. There we are. Now, I can't possibly be hurting, not till the anaesthetic wears off. Right, now, I'm not too sure what I have to do next. Oh, right, yes, that's a good idea. I'll have a bit of a rinse. Now, Mr. Malloy, keep out of my way, for heaven's sake. That'll be something. Hello? Yes? Mm. Oh, good eye. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. They, oh, terrific. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, see ya. Bye bye. Well, that's good news anyway, Mr. Malloy. Hmm? We've finished the sketch. We can all go home now. <laughs> well, I can't do anything about you, can I? I'm not a dentist. I'm only pretending. I was pretending to be an archaeologist a few minutes ago. Did you see that bit? No, I'm not an actor. You're not an actor? I'm not a dentist. Oh, no, you're just a dentist. <laughs> yeah, we've just finished. Oh, I've come to play the part of the patient, Mr. Malloy. I, uh, brought the false tongue. Oh! Oh! We know you'll be back. Though you're ten feet tall. Arty Jack! Oh, hello, off over up. Look over there. Where? is gone, Stan. Yep, just withered away. We put the notice in the paper this morning. Uh, it's a pity you have to spend money on them, especially after they're gone, eh? Twenty-five years. Twenty-five years is a long time, Stan. Must have seemed like bloody fifty, you know. It was nice the way she went, though. Yeah, it was always nice when she went. <laughs> to me, Stan, she was like the air. She was all around you. Like a bloody great blancmange. <laughs> She was so kind to people. She used to give of herself. What a talk about her giving herself. <laughs> it was the little things she used to do. The little things she did for people that they hated. Really? Oh, she hated me, you know. Really hate. I don't know why. I thought it was so moving. At the service when the Reverend stood up before all her friends. The two of us. And he said, here lies a woman. Here lies Rose. A rose by any other name. Couldn't remember her other name. <laughs> we used to have some good times together, Stan. Yeah, that's right. You and me and Rosie. Mm. Remember that picnic? You pretended to throw her in a deep water. Ah, yeah, that's right. Pretended, yeah. You we laughed. <laughs> you were always teasing her, Stan. Yeah, teasing her, yeah. You know, Stan, she said a funny thing to me the night she passed on. Never said anything funny in her own bloody life, Reg. She said... She'd always really loved you. Sorry, Percy. 
Percy, no explanations. I've given you the best years of my life, and I'll never forgive you for this. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to die. No, wait, wait. You don't understand, Marge. Let me explain it was like this. See, ten years ago, I was meeting Don's wife, Reading, for lunch. Now, there was absolutely nothing between us, when all of a sudden Don stormed into the restaurant and said to me, I'll never forgive you for this, Percy. I'm going to kill you. Don, you don't understand. Let me explain. No explanations. Prepare to die. No way that was like this. Twenty years ago, your wife and I had a child called Frank. Now, I was standing in the hospital one day when all of a sudden the door swung open and Carl Schuster, her ex-husband, walked in. And said, all right, Percy, this is the end for you. No, wait, Carl, put down that knife. Just let, let me explain. No explanations, Percy. I'm going to kill you. No, wait, please, Carl. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. You see, it was like this. Before I met your lovely wife, I was a bank teller. And I was in the bank one day when all of a sudden this man walked in and said... Stick them up or I'll shoot. Oh, no, no, wait, no, let me explain. Just hand over the money or I'll kill you. No, look, it was like this, see? As a small child, my mother and father used to beat me around. No all. explanations. And when my... Oh! Oh! But, but my father used to just sort of stand there and watch my mother as she sort of slapped, slapped me around and, and he used to just, just, just laugh a lot because I... And I was dropped a... down, stone dead on that bank floor. So you see, Marge, the man you hated died 50 years ago. <laughs> Hello. It's a funny old world, you know. Take my lot of business, for example. Now, I'm a hangman myself. Now, you wouldn't think it to look at me, would you? I mean, you wouldn't pick me out of a crowd and go, hey, look at him, he's a hangman. Of course you wouldn't. I'm not wearing me bloody hood, am I? But a hangman, I am in a funny old business it is, too. Talk about luck. <laughs> oh. I suppose you'd probably like to hear a few amusing anecdotes about my profession. Take this one, for example. Now, it's a bitly cold morning when I goes down and get this young bloke from the cell. Now, he seems like a nice young bloke, you know. Keep him well rugged up against the cold. Tell him a few jokes on the way over just to keep his mind off it. And I've got the rope all warmed up so it won't be too cold against his neck. These are just a few of the little things we do for our fellow human beings. <laughs> anyway, I stands him on a trap door and I slip the noose around his neck. And he has the last few words with the padre. Anyway, then I get the signal to let him drop. A few seconds pause, of course, till the Padre's off the platform. <laughs> and I pull the handle. Nothing happened. I pulled it again. Still nothing happened. I pulled that bloody handle again. Still nothing happened. What to do, I thought to myself. Jump up and down, and then I said to him, tell you what, he didn't jump too bloody hard, though. <laughs> so I gets up. Just a couple of good stamps on the door myself. Now, apparently the cold has froze the hinges. Sorry about the delay, I said to him. This don't usually happen, son. He's not too impressed, however. Anyway, <laughs> while my technician's looking at the hinges, I goes over to check the knob. And very important this is too. You see, there are some very important scientific aspects to the art of hanging. Now, take your knot, for example. Now, you must get your knot on the right side. Now, by the right side, we say the left-hand side. You get a nice, clean break. If you get it on the right side, it's wrong. Whereas if you get it on the left, that's right. right. So remember, right, right, wrong, left, right, right, wrong. Never mind, I always check it up before I hang them anyway. Some of my hangman friends have a little jingle to help them remember. And it goes something like this. Not on left, sure and swift. Not on right, hangs all night. <laughs> however, I find it hard to remember the jingle at times. Getting back to the story, however, I goes over to check the knot. And the young bloke's still standing there, you know, and he asked me for a last cigarette. Now, why they want to smoke, I'll never know. The things it must do to their lungs. It's on your head, I said to him, son, on your head. But he insists, and I lights his fag for him, and his hands are tied up behind his back, as one's hands usually are in such a situation. When all of a sudden, wait for it, all of a sudden, the bloody trap door opened. Well, down we both went. Look out, I yelled, every man for himself. 
I'm all right, but he's got his bloody hands up behind his back. In that split second, I thought to myself, how's he going to break his fall? Then much to my surprise, he stopped, whacked dead in midair, and I kept going. Then it all come back to me, of course, I thought, we're hanging him, aren't we? Well, I bloody died laughing. <laughs> I stand up with the tears rolling down my face, unable to see where I'm going, and I bash me bloody head on his feet. <laughs> Good <old love. laughs> I'm going to have to laugh, really, because... The joke was on me. I mean, it was me that hurt me bloody head on his feet, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, but you've got to laugh at life, haven't you? It's a funny thing. I do mind. Oh, is that a gun you've got? Yes. What are you going to do with it? It's to kill anyone who sits on my seat. Oh, I've met a man with a gun. And I don't think he's got it for fun. I don't think he's happy today. I think I better go on my way. Oh, I'm not very happy today. So I think you better go on your way. Well, I noticed you weren't happy today. So I think you better put it away. Uh -huh. I think you better put it away. Oh, no. Please put it away. All right, then, if you insist. What's a nice person like you doing carrying a vicious weapon like a gun? Oh, on the surface, I may look like a nice person, but underneath it, you see, I'm a raving maniac Maybe. with a pathological urge to kill. I'm a raving maniac. A maniac. I'm a screaming, raving maniac. I'm a raving, craving, screaming, raving, a raving maniac. She you don't look like a raving maniac. Oh. You look like a nice maniac. <laughs> Killed anyone lately? No. Oh, why not? Because I haven't met anyone who's on my death list yet. Oh, hang on, my name's probably on there somewhere. Let's have a look. Ah, yes. uh, you got Argonchoke, LT, no. That's not me. Vlodthrop, KP, no. And there's Palistinecki. Hey, that's me, Errol Palistinec. On page three, you can kill me. Go on. Oh, good. Go on. Oh, thank you. Look, sit still, be perfectly calm. One question, one obsession Drives your revengeful desire To assassinate all the people on your list Could you rephrase the question, please? I can't rephrase the question Could you rephrase the question, please? All right, why do you wish to exterminate thousands of people? Do you hate them? No, I don't hate the people. Oh. I just hate their names. <laughs> what do you hate about my name? Well, Polistinic sounds like a budgerigar. <laughs> oh, well, what name doesn't offend you? Well, I did have a rabbit once I liked called Peter. Oh, do you have a surname? No, he didn't. Oh. That's why I liked him. You see, what I hate most are the surnames. Sitting up there looking so smug and self-important. 
Oh, well, that's easy. All we do is change everyone's name to Peter. But you can't. Why? Because Peter's a rabbit's name. Oh. Well, we'll get everyone to change their name to your name and then you wouldn't want to kill them, would you? What's your name? Oh, I couldn't tell you that. Why? Because oh, you'll laugh at me. I know, I wouldn't. I really wouldn't. I promise you won't. I promise. Go on, what's your name? Peter. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? It's a rabbit's name. <laughs> well, I'm not a rabbit. I'm a pathological killer. Hey, hang on. I think I saw that name on the list. Can I have a look? Hang on. Where? Just here. Hey. There. Peter Pathological Rabbit Killer Box 40. You're on the list. Well, you're right. Mm -hmm. well, that means I have to exterminate myself then. That's right. Right. Well, here goes. Oh, I feel much better now I'm dead. Gee, you look perfectly well for a dead person. <laughs> I had some good times, and I've had some bad times I wished I never had. Now I feel so free, and you wish that you were me I wish to be I was. a nice man. Be a nice man. And not a sad man. Not a sad so man. dead to be happy. So dead to be happy. So dead to be happy. Dead to be happy. You know, if that gun fires such happiness, I could be as happy as you, couldn't I? Can I borrow it? No. It was only a joke. He had some good times. And he had some bad times. He wished he'd never had. Now he's free, but not like not me. Like me. Oh, he seems a nice man, man but, but not a sad man. man. I'm sad that he's happy, so sad to be happy. I wish he was happy, so sad to be happy. La 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 la. I'm being approached by three vampires, but I feel quite safe inside my six-pointed star. And I do, do wish I had some more garlic. That won't do you any good, Neville. Oh, I'm such a silly when the moon comes out. My heart is sitting down when I'm out. Skipping, hopping, never ever stopping. I can't keep still or never try. Oh, 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 o